Right. We'll start with uh, sitting next to me is the homie Babylon. We'll start with Chastity versus Shizor. Hey, what up, Star? Dominated every single caliber. <laughs> Yeah, the, the faceless voice in the bike. That's right. All right, and we got Ooh. universes. All right. So I, I actually, I already told Chastity this, but uh, this is this is a pretty good thing to point out. That's not just the Eno thing. So look at this combo over that's here. Right. Chastity right. does this a lot. Two K, two D, and an OTG stroke, right? And the thing that a lot of people don't realize early, like OTGs, feel good. It, you're seeing the combo counter go up. You're probably not paying much attention to how much damage you're doing, uh, right? You just see the extra hits and you're like, cool, I'm getting some extra hits. I, I get the juicy hit stop. I get to press buttons. Like this feels real good, right? The problem is, look at this. The faceless voice in the bike. That's right. All right. And so you go, got, you know, uh, uh, all right. So you have that much damage. How much How much damage do, do we think the stroke does off this, the OTG? <laughs> Boom. It does, it adds like, that's probably about like generously like 8%, right? Um, and it, like to the, to, the, to the damage, this is like maybe one or 2% of the, 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 the character's overall damage. I think OTG hits are like prorated to something of like 10% of what they do. Oh, hi, Kinako. Look at, look at a dog. Where's a dog? Puppy. Puppy dog, where are you going? Anyway. Uh, so you're not getting, you realistically, you're not getting that much damage. If damage was the only thing you're trying to get out of this, then maybe it's worth it, right? Like you see me go for OTG hits sometimes. I have pretty dumb reasons for doing it, but sometimes I do it. With Eno though, the problem is that what you're giving up is, is pretty obvious. Oh, Chastity got no Oki off this because the recovery off an OTG hit is so much faster, right? Um, when you're being hit and you're already on the ground, boom, boom, you get up a lot quicker. So in this case, I think this trades, right? Chastity had the 2D knockdown and traded the Oki advantage up from that knockdown for like maybe one or 2%, right? And it doesn't feel like oh, you're only getting one or 2% because you get the longer combo. Everything about it feels good. But when you look at what you actually get from this, uh, in most cases, unless that OTG is going to kill or create a really interesting situation that the opponent is not prepared for, the OTG is not worth it. And what you want is the knockdown that you can use for more fucking mix-ups, more messy guesses, whatever the fuck you want to call them, right? Uh, do not just go for the OTG uh, unless you have a good-ass reason. And if you're watching this replay review, you probably don't have a good-ass reason most of the time. Off 2D, you could be going for, for meaty note, you could be going for high lows, low highs, all kinds of stuff. But instead, the, the muscle memory autopilot, and trust me, I get it, Chastity, the muscle memory autopilot just gives you an extra one or 2% at the, at the, at the risk of having no Oki, right? Ooh. Okay, you know, pressing- See, the, uh, that the Oki right there the was much better. Oh, look at that. You didn't even get the 2K 2D combo, but afterwards, okay. you know, pressing, oh, you're able to yeah, empty jump low. You can't really do that otherwise. Hey, oh, Amanda. Oh. Holy shit, Amanda. Thank you so much for the two years of support. God damn. Uh, by the way, uh, I think I saw Amanda running a GoFundMe for some, uh, it was like tuition to go back and finish up school. Fam, if you want to pop the link in here, go right ahead. Uh, I hope I, I, that is an, an awesome thing to run a GoFundMe for. And I hope you get fucking paid off that shit. Hey, what up, Zwei? Yeah, anyway. Uh, watch your ladies there. Oh, all right. 6H, clear some space. Get the red ball going. HCL did not clear that. Yeah, the ball hey, is yeah, hit, there you so go. You Wouldn't 2K, 2D, okay. HCL be a better route for damage? I have no idea. Does that even combo? When I, when I play Eno and I get that 2D, I treasure that knockdown. I treasure every single fucking frame of that knockdown. Are you kidding me? Eno standing on top of you or hovering on top of you when you're knocked down is the scariest shit ever. I wouldn't trade that for an OTG. All right. Oh, I like, I like that. Oh, JH is such a hard thing to deal with. It's like, it's like step number one, right? If you can't, if you, if you're not, yeah, this fam, tall, getting disowned is right, definitely right. going to fuck up your ability to finish your degree. Right. That's right. Oh, okay. And the neutral has been activated. Oh, the tide. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess that's one way to get around it, but it's also a quick oh. nice Good use of stroke. stroke. Okay. And the gold burst. Nice she's gold burst. Just trying to spend that I'm shit. Actually, I'm going to turn down the audio just a little bit. 
All right. Oh, and the neutral activated one more time. She's going to take that one. Yeah. So the rest of this round, I mean, there's some, some good play on both sides, right? Like, one of the things about... Just, just to break this down real quick, one of the things about replay review is that your ability to play a good match is often dependent on your opponent to also play a, a match that lets you play well. So you don't need to break down every single thing. It's mostly about finding those discrete moments of improvement and bringing them up. I like that. I like the, the, the using, Again. using the right tools for the range, right? You want to use HCL when you're like right at the tip. You want to use stroke when you're, this is, so this is also bit. really good. Look at you this. Want to use HCL Goes high, it gets blocked. She's a roar down backs, expecting the low to follow. Goes high again and it hits, right? You can do it a little faster, but that right there is the main thing that makes Eno scary, right? And for what it's worth, I think I saw Chastity do the high and then in, into another high, like maybe twice the whole tournament. It wasn't that often. You can be doing that a lot more. Okay. And yeah, someone called out that Cheezor has been pretty new to the game. He, he's been playing fighting games for a little bit now. Um, I think he's he's come through Game Center multiple times, but this last stretch I think has uh, really been really been taking with him. It's been super cool to see him come to come through and just get better. Everyone can get better at this shit. Oh, got the punish. Hey Judson, thank you so much for the 28 months. Appreciate it, homie. Good to have you here. Oh, nice the kick. Nice stroke. Right, stroke. Closing the gap. Chastity keeps the pressure on. Oh, and HCL oh good use of HCL. One round of peace. Game audio could be a little bit higher. All right, turn the Actually, I think we might have to turn it up in game. We'll do it after this game. <sighs> it's also worth noting, I know nothing oh, about okay. this matchup. It goes low. And something I'm bored is that uh, Yeah, HCL YRC like is, is amazing. Yeah, you gotta be able to on it. Even if it hurts, you're sending a message. Oh, all right, back and forth. Chastity with the good combo. All right, the clap gets blocked. Oh, stroke. And Shizuru has to burst out. to get burst out. Oh, all right, good, good mash from Shizuru. I really like this. Like, check this out. Gets hit. Still mashes 2P and it ends up stuffing the follow-up. Realistically, the, against Eno, whenever you're playing against Eno, you need to demonstrate that you're willing to mash. If you do not demonstrate that you're willing to mash, she will run you the fuck over with zero respect for your life, like, or well-being. Hey, what up, Aaron? Good to see you. Was the stroke after super a punish? Let's see. It looks like it. I think that was a punish. I don't know. I mean, maybe he was ma maybe he recovered enough to mash. I don't know how if it's how minus that thing is. Oh, all right. Real quick, this right here. Yeah, that's right. All right. You gotta, you gotta show, Shizuru hits the DP, the goes for ball, and then immediately goes into Grandpa yeah, Viper, sure and it hits, and I understand why you would do that. Because it feels good to do one thing, and then another thing, and then just kind of take your hands off the stick and see what happens. People are using Grandpa Viper way too much. Like... We got a bunch of Heihyuns in beginner bracket. Well, right now two of them are, are in intermediate. But y'all just need to chill with that move, seriously. Grandpa Viper? Yeah. Uh, I don't remember. It's probably like half circle back, hard slash, or kick, or something. Huh. Okay, you know the first. Oh, and nice yeah, going to Vegas to eat is the right? wave. That's what that's what you fucking go for. Oh, oh my god. god. <laughs> And she's rotating. Actually, I choose to believe that that she's Sky went to Evo because he thought it, he heard it was Evo weekend and decided to roll up to Vegas and was disappointed when it didn't happen <laughs> or when it wasn't there. Yeah, last time I played Mario High, so I just did that shit in my face, and I was like, oh, oh, oh. Okay. Okay. Oh, nice, nice guy. Nice snipe through the, the ball. Oh, oh, right. the trade. Oh, all right. I just want to point this out. This is, this is, as far as punishes go, this is actually one of the worst possible punishes. Um... And it's because you settle for the air throw, 
But then you also not only do you just take the air throw, you only you 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 toss them out of the corner. So you're giving up both a good position and you're giving up damage. Oh, the air throw I respect just getting 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 something is better than getting nothing. It's probably um, like the best case scenario for whipping a grandpa. Like, oh, good block on the gold burst, chastity with that. Um, but like, I guess, pressure. I guess the the honestly the better way to put it is, you need to be able to demonstrate that you have a strong punish game if you want to get people to stop doing stupid shit or reckless shit, like random grandpa viper or random DP or whatever. Right? Being like, you want to hit people so hard when they give you those opportunities. And Chastity, I know you have the combos. I know you can do this, right? You have all those combos on deck. You want to hit them so hard that they never do that shit again. Yeah, Grandpa Viper is absolutely warm rock. Shout out to the Kyan fans out here. Like, you know, we'll do that to anybody. <laughs> Every, everyone looks the same when you're in the corner. Oh, against, you know? oh, 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 all right, in the burst. That's a risky place to burst. Nice throw. Nice air throw. All right, and the conversion, oh, text out. Oh, okay, the six H cash. And Chastity's ID con conversions actually got a lot better like later in the bracket. All right, all right, sets up the, the Super Bowl now. Woo! Oh, yeah, good air, good uh, reset there. Doesn't quite cash out for the full damage, but it's okay. Nice YC, I love that. Oh, good use of stroke. One of the things that you have stroke to is also do kind of warm rock, but it's usually you okay. Do. You can undo it. Because stroke is, is uh, a lot better for you on block yeah. than uh, Grandpa right. Viper is. Absolutely. Excellent use of YRC yeah. note. Yeah, you just do. When, when when they're one hit away from dying, you just do the safest possible thing that'll kill them. Yeah. That was good stuff. Uh, we'll move on. Let's see who's next. I think that, did they end up playing another game? Yeah, we'll, we'll keep things moving. more fun to get y'all Oh, this is what this one's Miss Mocha May versus Mika Mika Me. Way too many M's up in here. Also, shout out to NorCal Dogfight for, for providing the uh, wonderful backdrop. We'll get a Caliburst one made one of these days. <laughs> Using in accordance with Dice K's vision, we are playing a mob of red tooth. <laughs> I mean, look, you know what's right. Also, this this one's really funny. Oh, you two carpool together? That's awesome. Uh, I was I was cracking up at this because I saw the character select and I saw Mika Mika me pick Elfelt, but then later when you two were playing on the team tournament, uh, uh, Mika Mika me picks uh, Jacko, right? And I was like, huh, was he waiting for you to pick? But I guess if you carpool together, you probably already knew who you're picking. Anyway, good old good old Valentine matchup right, here. So this, is, this is a Valentine battle. We got Jack on the left. We got and Elsa on the right. Woo. Surprisingly, even though it's low to the side, there's a surprisingly even matchup. Yeah, that's good. So, so I will... Oh, interesting. Oh, the whole we what up, one bin? Early on. And especially good, yeah, set play, those bases. What these characters are doing. So, uh, one thing I just want to mention here is that, like, right here... Battle of the carpools, yeah. Right here, you get you get the combo, you go in, get that get anti air off the 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 air dash in. Like, I don't I don't know Jacko's conversions that well. I don't know what she's supposed to be doing here, but I will say that you landed two solid hits and you set up a base. You probably could have set up more and gotten like a better knockdown or something like that. Like, uh, you. You are getting everything you need to win this round, right? Jacko wins by winning small in the beginning and then kind of like letting that rock and letting it snowball. And you were you were starting to really put this together really well. And especially at this Woo. level of play, a lot of what these characters And Mika Mika Me doing a good job clearing those bases too. Look at this. Like I know I know Mika Mika Me already. I'm just gonna say Mika. Uh but uh is is picking picking a normal picking 5h like i know mika uses the 5h a lot uh it does do some good damage to the houses and then you know just mashing to clear them out like that stuff is important do you understand these tools do you understand the situation do you understand how they work with elf help it's about it's really about like understanding picked up the game like five days ago god damn you did great do i have my options to deal with buttons in neutral do i have my options that's fucking godlike oh jacko it's like do you know how to go after and Jacko's a Jacko's a fun-ass you know character, too. Makes the player, uh, 
So basically, the game plan with Jacko is to get the hit or to get the space that will let you set up the bases, and then you want you you kind of just want to let them do their work, right? If the opponent, if the the the, the, the position that you always want to put the opponent in, into is they have to choose between going for the bases and going for you, and if they go for you, then you can defend and play really conservatively and not get hit. So that the bases have time to level up and the homies roll up on them usually from behind. And if they go after the bases, then you can chase after them and hit them out of their attacks because while they're hitting the bases, they're not hitting you. So you're free to punish them for go for chasing the, the bases as much as you want. Exactly. If they don't harass you, you got time to macro. Oh, the homie whiffing on the swing there. And I think I called it out after like a game or two. We know we know when we're commentating that the players can hear us, so we'll, we'll usually try and offer some advice while we're doing, because especially for beginners, right? It's a learning experience. But uh, Miko was not using shotgun at all for like the first couple games. Shot like Elfeld's pressure is fine without shotgun; she doesn't need it. But shotgun is very very strong. That's right. Sturban's out here like, how dare you not treat the beginner bracket with the it's utmost not, competitive not integrity? We know you're a busy man. You all kinds of One bin, don't make me boot your ass. <laughs> I would time you out, but oh, you're yeah, too funny. Oh, okay. Jacko with the court advantage. No Ooh. bases out, though. The thing, yeah, the thing about Jacko is that if she has bases out, just stalling is a win for her. Right. Oh, there you go. Just stalling is a win for you if you have bases out. Mm. Mika also using Bridal Express a lot in neutral. It's, it, it's pretty tricky. Oh, I like the sniper rifle, though. Oh, the 5P. I love it. Oh. Oh, a little short on the command grab. I like the mobility on screen for Mika. Doing a good job of pressuring those houses without over committing, which is really good. Oh, the homie coming through. You do have to watch the negative penalty. There's a lot of backdashing going on here. Clears the bases. Oh, oh okay, nice match. You kind of, I hate to say it, but whenever you play Elfelt or against Elfelt on round start, just be ready for round start 5H. Just like go for round start crouching buttons if you can. Like every now and then they're just going to mash that shit and you will get paid. Be ready. It feels real good to stop them when they do that shit. Nice approach. Hey, what up, Dino Boy? It's good to see you all. Oh, good, no, good hit, hit off the home. Yeah. Like, if those command off. grabs hit, if you had just been a little bit closer, this round would have looked way different. Oh, this is also really good, actually, right here. So, in general, you want the houses to be behind the opponent. This is an excellent example. Since they're already at max screen separation, they can't get any further from each other. Uh, Mika does not seem to have an attack that would hit behind Elfelt here, right? Enough to hit the base. And choosing to stay here and plant a base is real good. Because that way, because that if, if you had moved forward at all, then that would have given Mika the space to clear to, to move backward a little bit and clear the base. But because you didn't move forward, Mika couldn't move back. Oh, JD the God. See, now, now your shit's all leveled up. That baby level one house that was one hit away is now a big old level two house with more hits on deck. And it's like from here, from this range, like you got three level two houses. You don't have to do shit. You didn't have to take that hit. You didn't have to walk anywhere near the five age. Look at this. You, yeah, you, you could have just let the homies roll up. Oh, 
Oh, also, uh, it's worth pointing out, Jacko actually gets more meter when she hangs out closer to the houses. So you would have been in perfect shape just letting the homies roll up, seeing uh, Mika like have to swing on the homies to try and clear them, and then going in and covering with 3H. Yo, Dragon Ball got a wild ass uh, update today. That, some of that shit looks pretty crazy. It it does actually look kind of like a plus R update where they're just like, you know what? We'll open this up a little bit. Fuck it. We're not going to do that much more to the game. This might be one of the longest matches Yoki has ever watched. Yeah, I was pretty long. Uh, yeah, we'll get we'll give him one, one more game here and then we'll move on to the next set. It was a little hazy yesterday. Oh. It was a trip coming back from SoCal and seeing worse air in uh Yeah. In so actually game. this is this is a good example here too. Like it was a little hazy yesterday. You get the hit? Elfelt bursts you off. If Elfelt doesn't immediately ID at you, you have more than enough space and time to just set a base. Just do it. Like, the thing about being Jacko is that if they ever bought back off of you for even just a second, you can set a base and make them regret it. And one thing we actually, we haven't really seen Mika Mika using shotgun pressure. Shotgun is huge in the corner. Uh, it makes the, the opponent's burst a lot of value. Hey, what, what up, someone? Oh, the homie with the follow-up. All right. Three, three level one. Jack. Jack yeah, nice to see you start team using team. 3H, though. That's good. Uh, level two 3H is, is Jacko's scariest neutral button. Both the house and Jacko at the same time. She can, yeah, she can just okay. legit whiff punish so many things with it. Sky, that's what you get for round start backdashing against Jacko. Why would you do that? Oh, get shot. I know I've been mostly focusing on uh, Miss Mocha May in this set, but really the main point of, of improvement for Mika in this game, I think, is just getting better Elfelt combos and learning how to use that shotgun shit better. Like, shotgun, like... Elfelt has so much damage potential that uh, Mika isn't taking advantage of here. But a little bit of labbing, some more practice, more experience, that's how you get good with this character. It, it don't take that much, to be honest. Elfelt is very tournament vi viable without having to do that much work. Yeah, we got, we got stride bracket a little later. People are going to have to be having fun with the throwing clips on that. <laughs> Run up 2H? Oh, yeah. It always cracks me up when I see you do that shit. That was good. That was really good. So, I like this. You see... You see that Mika is backing up because, uh, and it's it's pretty clear that like Mika doesn't want any of this action here. You got your buttons, you got your homies, but Mika is about to put the hurt on the base, so you go right in. And this is oh, nice hit. Three H, I think, would have been an excellent pick here. It will low profile most of the buttons that Elfelt's got. IDing also could work out okay. You end up overshooting a little bit. And like Elfeld's anti airs are good enough that I uh, should be able to contest. But that was the right idea, absolutely. Oh, wake up, burst super, get him. Okay. Alright, Jack has got the army on deck. Oh, the trades. Oh, really close right now. Oh, the guns. Yeah. That 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 round is all yours. You just misplayed, but it happens. It's good stuff though. All right. Uh, let's see what else. This is Nas. Oh, 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 I'll, I'll watch yeah, Nas versus yeah, me too. It's a uh, kind of everything you want to do, right? Jam wants to move forward. Um, but once you start to learn Jam's options a little bit more, it's a little bit easier to do. Actually, hold up. Before we get into this, I want to look at Elfelt's win quote here. Where is it? Oh, here we go. Uh, there's something called a lariat that brides wear, and it's also like a wrestling move, right? What is she talking about? 
What? Huh? No. What? Yeah, I was thinking like garter belt or something like that, right? Yeah. But that, that 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 doesn't sound anything like lariat. Anyway, laurels could be. Hey, what up, Miku? It's a kind of necklace. Oh. Yeah, chastity coming through with the deep knowledge. It's actually called a lariat. That, oh shit! All right. All right. We'll get we'll get Nas versus Miku up next. Enjoy the sleepy puppy. It's uh, it's it's an interesting one. At first, like when you learn this matchup as Jam, it feels like Souls is gonna fuck. So up I know Nas has been putting a lot of work and coming through to the Friday sessions at, at Game Center a lot. Am I reviewing all matches? Hell no. Sturman, this tournament was like three hours long. You think I'm reviewing all of them? Fuck out of here. It's a little bit easier to deal with. Oh, the overhead gets blocked. Yeah, right off the bat, don't don't just go into uncarded uh, Geki out of nowhere. Don't don't do that shit. You gotta set this shit up. There are all so many other things that you could be doing besides going so deep in your string. So this is this is the hard part with playing jam early on. Is once you learn a combo, you want to go deep into that combo like all the time, and uh, it's really tempting. But part of playing jam is learning where you can put pressure resets in there, where you can do less committal shit. The, the thing is that for pretty much every Guilty Gear character, the longer you get into a string, right? The, the more recovery and the more commitment you have in your string, right? So if you do like punch, kick, slash, hard, slash, dust, right? Uh, your moves start out very fast. And then by the end of the string, they're much slower and it takes a lot more work, or It takes a lot more time, right? And that time, because the attacks are coming much more slowly, because they have more startup and more, you know, active frames, more recovery, all that stuff. Uh, and because they're bigger, they hit harder, right? It's easier for the opponent to react to something. If you, if you do something like this, right? Let's say, let's say run up, close S, 2H. Let's say, let's say Nas went 2D and then jump cancel, dive kicked, right? Jump cancel into J2K. That would be a lot harder to defend against than this geki but this geki is slow as fuck and it's coming and in a long ass string already it's pretty easy to see coming and then you get punished for it you got to be careful with that shit wild throw hits oh this is the fact in combo though oh another thing i want to point out here uh so a lot of souls moves are like uh basically either knowledge checks or like reaction checks right bandit bringer and bandit revolver are a good example of that like a riot stamp too is also a really good example of that so that dealing i don't know if this is on reaction i think it was but dealing i like i like the decision to just gold burst that that bandit bringer or bandit revolver because uh nas is like I'm, I can see this coming very clearly. What's the thing that will get me paid the most? Gold burst. Give me that gold burst, right? I like to blitz Bandit Bringer and ba Bandit Revolver a lot. You can also IB them, but then the situation you're, uh, you're in afterwards, Soul can still like uh, Dragon Punch and shit. So what I what I like to do is I like to blitz just so that Soul doesn't even have that option, right? But you can do anything. You can parry it if you're jam. You can DP it if you've got a DP. Whatever the fuck you want. You it, like if you see a Soul player go from a block string into Bandit Bringer or Bandit Revolver, you should just be able to fuck Soul up every time you do not punish him for doing that thing uh because you didn't react to it you let soul get away with murder and the other move that's a lot like this with soul is riot stamp like in pretty in most situations like plus our plus our soul is a different beast you, know, you can do it super close to the wall it's kind of annoying anytime you see someone willing to just throw this move out in in neutral you should just you should just fuck them up for it like there's kind of no excuse for doing it and that's that's how you play against soul is there's a couple things where you have to do that if he if he if he puts if he tries it you just fuck him up for it and don't let him get away with that shit because if you if you demonstrate that you don't have that kind of stuff on deck then soul will just run over you he'll just disrespect you oh and that wild throw hits Oh, oh, this is the nice, nice play from Soul here. I like the. It's a gun flame. Could have wire seed that to keep the pressure going, but decides to keep on playing neutral and ends up getting paid off of it pretty good. 
<laughs> What's the answer to Bandit Revolver? It's the same thing as Bringer. You can Blitz, you can DP. Some characters can 6P that shit, I think. Like, you can, like, I think Chip can, like, jump back JD. Everyone's got something that'll fuck that thing up. Blitz is usually my go-to. It's it's the easiest not one that's like hard to fuck up. And tap blitz, not charge blitz. Oh, right stomp once again. Yeah. Miku, Miku saw riot stomp one or riot stamp work the first time, threw it out the second time. Woo! Nice conversion from Nas. I love it. Gets gets the PK combo. Fam, we seeing PK combos in beginner bracket. What the fuck is Irene doing to these jams? Oh. <laughs> nice far ass. Tick throw. That burst is a little dicey, but it worked. Oh, too short on the, the Karageki. I like the attempt, though. Yeah, ride stamp once again. That one's a little bit harder to deal with, but uh, Miku didn't end up getting anything off of it, so it's not the worst if you let it go. Ooh. Really good 2S there. I love that... 2, 2S is a, an amazing counter poke. It's good for all kinds of shit. But... Let's see. Let's see. Where did that bandit uh, bandit revolver come out of? Like that is that is very beatable, right? Block string, even even on hit in the bandit revolver, you can just blitz that. All right, Miku got the knockdown. Oh, run up wild throw. Yeah, that shit happens. Getting so th though, I will say like. Getting wild thrown here is actually not the worst, right? So look at the situation that uh, that Nas is in. Nas got knocked down. It's a pretty good knockdown. Soul's like right on top of, of Jam. Soul goes for a deep JS. I think ends up no, it almost whiffs, but not quite, right? So what what do you do here if you're Nas? Well, you can go for a wake up DP, but with the the JS being as deep as this is, uh, it's you're at risk of getting safe jumped, right? I don't know if this is a safe jump setup. It certainly looks like it could be a safe jump setup or close to it because of how deep this JS hits, right? So you, you know you're you're probably holding the JS pressure. You could try and parry. Maybe that'll work, but it, it puts you at a similar risk of getting safe jumped. Um, so Nas decides to block it. Not the worst call, right? If if Nas did something, if, if Nas fucked around and got hit by the JS, very likely dead, okay? So... Nas chooses to block. Block works out fine. Then you get wild thrown. Well, that happened. It would be nice if Nas had mashed out. If if Nas had been ready for it, right? Like you could fuzzy mash the sit shit. Maybe you catch Soul out before the wild throw comes out. But even in this situation where uh, where Miku gets the wild throw, there's enough damage proration on the wild throw that it's not going to kill, right? If if Nas had mashed, Nas risks getting counter hit. Counter hit turns into a bigger combo. Bigger combo fucking kills you. But getting wild thrown when you're not uh, when you're not in at risk of getting killed by wild thrown is definitely not the worst outcome here. Still sucks to get spiked into the fucking ground. Oh, but the drops. Oh. Yeah, wild throw is an acceptable risk. And it's deceptive, kind of like Jam's throw, actually. They're both deceptive because you eat a fucking combo afterwards and it feels terrible. But in terms of the damage you take, it's actually not usually that big a deal. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Oh, that's right, At least, yeah. Jam like cackles while she does it. It's the most annoying right, shit. She's like, ha ha ha, I three bitch. Oh, and the six H attempt gets clapped. Oh, this is another thing I really like. Look at what Miku's doing here. Runs up, two H, jump cancel. Oh, the two H didn't hit? Okay, peace. And then gun flame. Jump cancel is great because it'll get you out of the the buttons, right? Like if you, you, you so you don't want to just let that two H rock, right? So yeah, go ahead and jump cancel and then see what happens, right? Oh, they blocked the jump, the two H. Okay, I'll, I'll back out. I, I I still got options. I can still do stuff, right? It's really smart. Trade on gunplay works out. Oh, it drops the combo though. 
Nice jump in from Nas. Oh, ends up getting a reset there. Oh, so this, I think Nas actually does this successfully a little bit later in the set. But check this out. So uh, Nas is getting his block string FD'd here, right? And since Jam has so many hits in her attacks, especially in the 5H that he Gatling's into next, he gets pushed out pretty quickly, right? But he has the presence of mind to swing with, to Gatling backwards from 5H into Far S. Now here he's already out of range, but that I like that idea because if 5H is getting FD'd and it pushes you way the fuck out, Far S might still be able to hit and then you can IED in. And Nas actually does that, I think, in a, in a later game. But like, that's that's really good. Like seeing beginners adapt their block strings because they're getting FD'd out is not not that common, to be honest. No punish on Volcano oh. Fucks it up that yeah, time. Again, letting that Riot Stamp rock. And, like, so at this point, I think Miku has bust out Riot Stamp, like, five or six times, right? And I want to point out, like, shutting down Riot Stamp is not just a big deal because it's an opportunity to get, a you know, a da damage. It's an opportunity to, like, get, like, a really clean combo. Like, pretty much everyone can 6P that shit and get good damage off of it. It's also, like, think about how it feels when one of your go-to neutral tools just gets shit on repeatedly, right? You do it once, ah, oh, that sucks. They saw it coming, right? You get out of it twice, oh, okay, maybe it's a little bit dicey, right? What you want to do with things like that, like the, the, the good equivalent, that, uh, the good example that I can give for Chip is Alpha Blade. If I can get away with hitting you with like random Alpha Blades and neutral, I'm going to keep on going for that shit because I get a combo afterwards a lot of times. So at the very least, I get a knockdown. Like if you just keep on running into it, I'm going to keep on using it and it feels great. I'm like, I could play neutral or I could just wait you to run at me and then Alpha Blade, right? And once, once that Alpha Blade gets punished and it gets punished real good, I'm talking like full ass combo, right? Uh, then I reconsider. I'm like, hmm, now I need to actually do other stuff. Similarly, I'm willing to bet that if Nas had, had beaten the first three Riot Stamps clean, right? Just 6P that shit or whatever, parry it, whatever the fuck you want, then uh, Miku would be uh, stressed, right? A little bit more stressed because the go-to Riot Stamp tool is just no longer viable. And once you shut down tools like that with people... Um, Sometimes they stop using it. What's more likely is that they stop using it until they forget that they're supposed to stop using it and they panic and they use it and then you kill them for it again, right? That's that good shit. You want to make them scared to use the stuff that they want to use the most. It's not just about the hits. It's about inflicting that mental damage. The blocks. Oh, all right, the 2D trade. Okay. Oh. Oh. If Nas had spent the meter, that would have been good. Oh, that's, that's, an, that's, an, we'll use this as another teachable moment. So like, Guilty Gear is a special fighting game because it's one of the few fighting games where you have enough time to see, oh, I did something stupid. And then if you have meter, you can stop it, right? You can go, I would like to undo the stupid thing that I did, right? And it might not have been stupid. Maybe it was smart, but it didn't work out. Whatever it is, if you got 50 meter, you don't have to hold that shit. You can just leave, right? You can just Right here? I don't know what Nas is trying to do with the region. Maybe it's a region YRC setup. Maybe he meant to get a different special. I don't fucking know. But at any point, Nas has so much meter that Nas could just be like, nah. I'm, I did a region. It was a bad thing. I don't want to, to, to stand up and face the consequences of my own actions. Thank you. I'm just going to spend 50 meter and cancel this shit. Do it. I know that in beginner bracket, you are less likely to get your shit punished every single time. And so it's very it's very tempting to just be like, eh, maybe I can save the meter. Maybe I'll get away with it. But it's a really good habit to, to, to just reflexively bail from shit, right? If something happened, if you do something and it doesn't work out quite the way you wanted it to, just fucking bail, right? Spend the meter, cancel it, just do what you gotta do to get the fuck out of there, right? It's really important for Guilty Gear because a lot of times in Guilty Gear, if you give up one hit in neutral, if you fuck up and get punished and you get knocked down or whatever, you just might be fucking dead, right? I know it's true in plus R, it's true in Exert, it's true in Strive. Like, you give someone that good opportunity, they will take use of it and they might just steal the whole fucking round from you. So spend the meter to make sure you don't get fucked up like that. Hey, what up, Celestio? Good to see you. Okay. Oh, oh. 
Good use of Gunflame. I like that. Okay, we got we got a solid DMV out here. Oh, <laughs> that's no right, Sturman. Oh. That, this, this is, a, this oh, is a, a minor thing, but so Nas, yeah, I'm, I'm still doing the public lobbies. I got, I got a public lobby open right now. We got six people in here. They're playing some video games, baby. It's always yeah, WC play GG. Um, okay, so check it out. Just real quick, oh, Nas goes right. for the, uh, the Puffball Super. Miku is FDing it. Nas RCs it to go for the 5D, but because they're at mid screen and the the uh and Miku's FDing too far away. Yeah. Don't do that shit mid screen. Don't do the whole RC thing mid screen. That's pretty much only good in the corner. Yeah. So Celestio, just so you know, we usually run the public lobbies on Mondays and Wednesdays. He's too far away to get the 5D. Oh the volcanic viper. Oh. Oh, oh. I love it when I watch the, the replay and I would commentate the exact same thing that I just said on commentary. But it was indeed a big 6H. Woo. Oh, where's our dog? Oh, whiff on the wild yeah. folks a little bit too early. Allows Jam to get started. A IED pressure into the Deku Dean. Card it up. Card it again. Yeah, again, that bandit uh, bandit revolver, if that shit was parried or blitzed or whatever, then Miku needs to find another thing to go into, right? Again. Again. And you know how this shit happens? It's because you're on defense and you're too busy thinking about what you want to do next to pay attention to what your opponent is doing now, right? You don't get to do that. You don't get to think about like I, I get it, right? If I was if I was Nas right here, I got the Geki carded, I got 75 meter, I'm like, ooh yeah. What kind of fucked up bullshit and I'm am I gonna land in order to make back this massive health deficit, right? But look, because because Nas's focus is not on beating the defense, right? Look at what happens. One gets hit, two. Gets hit again. Gunflame. Yup. And then, no, the riot stamp just to, to, to cap that all off, right? Like, the, the thing is, the problem is not that Nas is getting like massively outplayed here or anything. It's really just that he, he's not keeping the right cards on his mental stack, right? I like to think of fighting games kind of like a card game that's happening in real time, right? Where you choose what cards you want in your hand. Your hand is, is basically like the two or three things that you can think of at any given time, right? So I'm guessing that Nas is thinking about offense or, or maybe thinking about wild throw or something. I don't know what it is, but Miku got away with murder there every single time your opponent does something that could have been beaten that that you could have beaten if you reacted to it it's a, that's a sign that you're not thinking about the right things on defense right when you're on defense you got to be thinking you generally you got to be thinking about what you need to do to get back to neutral if you can get a counterattack or something that's fucking great but most cases you're not going to be able to do that unless they do something that's reactable and predictable or whatever right so most of the time you just gotta be thinking how to get the fuck out of there right and if you're in the corner it's harder to get the fuck out of there so you might have to think okay where can i stop their offense and apply some offense of my own but you don't get to think about what you want to do on offense until you have made your way out of the defensive situation right deal with the big ass fucking dude with the cigarette lighter who's trying to fuck you up in front of you Deal with that situation, and then you can think about what combo you want to get next. And I'm sure it's really good because you got 75 meter and a Kardageki. Yeah. Well, the good thing to leave out for the, you know, the, the replay. Oh, yeah. Gunflame is really good against Jam early on. Oh, here's, here's a good one. This ended up working out okay for Nas. Don't burst in the air. Unless you know what you're doing, most of the time, this is just going to lead to sadness and sorrow. As it almost did there, except Miku whiffs the punish and so Nas gets the throw. But seriously, air bursting is incredibly dangerous and usually not worth it. And the reason it's dangerous is a... Thank you, Sky. I was wondering if someone was going to spend the 20k to get that. I mean, you're probably fucking paid. This is the sound of an aerial burst going unpunished. Look at this. Hey, nice 
Oh. Oh. Oh, nice wake up throw. Okay, those dive kick. Okay, I like it. Oh, the accidental charge. Again with the bandit revolver and then the bandit bringer. Oh, nice call out on the puff balls. We can get one hit and take it. Oh, nice. So much blocking. And Nas's blocking is really good. It's just a little too late. All right, Miku takes Miku it. Good SSG stuff. SSG that was that was a, those are some good educational replays, though. Um, I think we'll we'll I'll try and get in the habit of doing this pretty frequently because uh, it's a lot of fun. Yo, Eric. Uh, Sky asks, can Jam block the first hit of dive kick and then parry the second? That's a good question. I think yeah, probably. That sounds like some some shit Jam would do. Anyway, we'll go ahead and get some games in. I hope the replay review was useful to y'all. I will cut this for YouTube uh, just to make sure folks can see it. Look, it's. Getting, getting better is fine. Getting better is dope. Part of getting better is uh, being able to walk through not just, oh, I dropped this combo. Oh, I should have reacted to this thing. It's about diagnosing the thought process that led, that led you there, right? These games get easier and they slow down and they get a lot more fun once you're able to uh, make sure that your brain is thinking about the right thing at the exact right time. So we'll keep on 